so my name is Judith Seeley and I'm a professor here in the Department of Archaeology and I specialize in chemical analyses, specifically stable isotope analyses, non-radioactive isotope analyses of uh, material that comes from archaeological sites. So we analyze bones and teeth and shells and soils and a whole range of archaeological remains to find out about the diets that people ate in the past and the environments that they were living in. I got involved in it because Vicky Gibbon asked me to get involved. So when she was putting together a team of specialists to work on different aspects of this project to try and extract as much information as we could about these people. So what I've done is to um, measure the stable carbon and nitrogen isotopes in very tiny samples of bone and teeth from these individuals. And that tells us something about their diet. It tells us quite a lot about the environment that they were living in. Because of course in those days, people ate locally produced food. So the food reflects the environment that they were living in. The chemical composition of these people's teeth and bones confirms that they came from and lived in an arid environment, like the environment around Sutherland. So in the case of Klaas Stuermann, for instance, we have found differences between his teeth and his bones. And that confirms the archival record of Klaas Stuermann's life, which was that as a child, he lived with a group of free-living, independent San people in the area between Sutherland and Carnarvon, but that he was brought to the farm as a child and then he worked on the farm, he lived there, and eventually he died there. They have confirmed that the skeleton that we thought was the skeleton of Klaus Sturman is probably correctly identified. And they um, show that, at least in that respect, the archival records of his life are probably correct. That's useful because the archival records are third-hand information passed along, along from one person to another. From what we can tell, it looks as though the people during the time they were living on the farm were all eating fairly similar diets. We um, can put this together with the evidence from, the, uh, from their teeth and from the dental caries. So we know that they were eating some refined carbohydrates and sugars that led to the high um, frequency of dental caries. Um, and we, yes, we can, um, we can see that there are a few people, particularly Klaus Sturman, but perhaps also to some extent Cornelius Abraham, who may have eaten slightly different diets as children and therefore probably moved around in the course of their lifetimes. This is, I think, quite a groundbreaking project, certainly in the South African context, because it's been possible to make contact with the families and the families have been extraordinarily generous and um, accepting of uh, the university considering the difficult history that lies behind this. And um, I suppose for me the most um, moving moment was going to Sutherland and meeting the families and telling them about some of the information that we've collected and um, I hope that that is going to help them come to terms with what happened here.